are here at Public Media Network with Matthew Fries, a uh, jazz piano professor from Western Michigan University, to learn about how, uh, what does it take to be a musician in the 21st century. And Matthew, thank you so much for sharing sure. um, about your uh, experience, about your music. And you mentioned that you just released your album. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you tell us about more what motivates you, what kind of music you record, and what inspired you, what was behind this music? Um, okay, that's a, that's a big There's question. There's a lot of <laughs> questions, yeah. <laughs> I just try to make sure that I don't forget <laughs> anything. <laughs> no, um, it's... Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I love, um, I love a lot of styles of music, and I love a lot of styles of jazz music, um, and I think um, when I'm recording in particular, um, or com and then a lot of the recordings that I've done un under my known, own name, I also like to present music that I've created from from nothing. You know, like it'll be a um, music that I've written myself. Um, and I think usually when I write that music, um, I don't know, I don't have a real specific agenda or idea of what I'm trying to do with it. Um, but, you know, it's such a personal thing, it, you know, and no matter, no matter what you do, it ends up sounding like you. And I think, um, I think for myself, I think I know that, that, that whatever I do is going to end up sounding like me and I just embrace that and and I think that there is like a, there is a sound to the music that I compose that is recognizable. Um, and, and I, you know, I kind of get that from, from people I work with and from people who hear it. It's like, you know, it's, it has a very specific sound to it. And I don't know exactly how to put it into words more than that uh, to describe what it is. Um, for this new record that I just did. Yeah, what's the name of the album? Um, oh, the album is called Lost Time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all music that I wrote kind of re somewhat recently. Like, I knew I was going to do this project. Um, uh, I got a nice grant from the, uh, the Arts Council here in Kalamazoo to help me with that. Um, so I knew I was doing that, and so I started writing. And this was all during the COVID pandemic, kind of the lockdown, when people were, we didn't know what was going on, and we were just kind of at home and disconnected. And... Um, there was a lot of that as a theme that kind of ran through, because it's just kind of the time that I was creating this music. Um, and a lot of that I see now as I'm looking back. I don't think when I was writing this music, I was like, I am going to write a bunch of specific, music that is a yeah. specific story yeah, about the pandemic. No, it's just like, I'm just, I'm at home and I have, and I want to create and I would write. Um, but you know, when you're creating, you're very affected by what is happening around you. You know, you think of artists who were composing or painting, you know, during a time of war or during a time of, of, um, of, of great good things. And it's like how different the music or the art is at those different times. Um, and, you know, and the, this pandemic for us was a real... Tough. Was a real... Yeah, it was, it was tough for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, the title Lost Time comes specifically... Um, there's a composition on the record called Lost Time that I wrote for my mother. Um, she passed away during the pandemic. Um, she did not from COVID, but she was elderly and she had dementia and um, her husband had passed away very uh, kind of suddenly. And she was alone in a, basically in a, um, a retirement home in, a, in a, um, a rehab center really, because she had been ta being taken care of by her husband. We were, scrambling to try to figure out what was next for her. Um, but because of the COVID restrictions, I wasn't allowed to go to visit her. Exactly. Right? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, and so there was like a little, you know, I know we all have our own stories about what, how things happen. But for me, that, that, that was a really profound impact on my experience during this pandemic, that it meant isolation from someone that I loved. Um, and there who's someone close, but you yeah. cannot reach them. Yeah, and because she had dementia, you know, I, it wasn't like I couldn't call her up on the phone and, or, you know, get, they, they would bring the iPad in and hold it up in front of her face and I t so I could have a conversation with her, which was wonderful, but she had no idea who I was or w what was happening, really. It was, it was, a, it was a really complicated um, time. Um, 
and I think, you know, like I said, I didn't set out to write about all of this stuff, but it that's what was happening in the, in the in, yeah in the time, and it really resonates through through the whole record. Um, it's not all sad. The, the music's not all like gloom and doom. I mean, you know, when you're um, when you're grieving or anything, there's there's ups and downs, and um, so there's there are pieces on there that are kind of a little more lighthearted and um, uh, faster and and more you know like a faster tempo and more exciting, and and then there are things that are more you know capturing a mood or a or an energy that's a little more um, confused or peaceful or spooky or you know lots of different sort of things so i'm really proud of the music though and i'm i, I just the way the guys played on it is just they really made it wonderful so. and uh you brought with you cd how people can find your music uh this album and any others is there is like a website or yeah yeah well if how you, they can purchase and and yeah, I'm, I'm selling it um, off of my own website, which is just, it's my name, Matthew Fries, F-R-I-E-S, looks like French fries, right? <laughs> MatthewFries.com. Um, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I'm selling LPs. I have the, you know, I think you bought one. Yeah. Right? It's a I beautiful, it's, cool. it's, it's a beautiful area. blue, yes. yeah, it's a, it's really gorgeous. It came out so beautiful and sounds great. Um, that and then I'm selling downloads. The, the CDs I brought a CD along just to have one here in case you needed it. But um, I didn't really print those for selling. They're mostly to be used for radio promotion and for reviews and things like that. Um, so I have a few extras of those around. But it is available on all the streaming platforms. So like if you're a Spotify person or Apple Music or Tidal or Kobus or whatever. Um, I mean, even you can if you can try to get Alexa to pronounce my, pronounce my name, you can get her to play it for you. It's like, yeah, Alexa, Alexa's smart. Play, play Matthew Freeze. Freeze. Fries. <laughs> yeah, see if see if see if she can figure it out. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's it's available everywhere like that, and um, yeah. And um, I also like uh, when I ask you, um, Matthew, you have this great experience. You have. Um, uh, you were go through a lot of thi uh, things as a musician, you know, mm -hmm. and probably there were ups and downs, mm -hmm. you know, and what uh, would be your piece of advice to young musicians who decided or not, they still like kind of like don't know what they want to do with their life, but mm -hmm. they kind of like have this idea, but they don't know what way to go. What would be advice? Um, I think the biggest you? thing is, um, you know, learn about a lot of different things and don't feel like you need to know the answer right now. You know, it's about asking questions. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're kind of living, as adults, we're in a kind of a great time, but you know, the, my parents' generation or the generation before, it was like, you know, you got married at a, when you were 18 and you got a house and you had kids and you had the same job for the rest of your life. And that's kind of, you had your career. Um, and now it's like people are, you know, picking up and changing careers multiple times through their life, lives. So not be um, afraid to yeah, change. Yeah, don't be afraid to change. Yeah. And, and don't be, you know, and therefore, you know, there's, there's things that, you, that you're going to learn about in 10 years that are going to change the way you think about a lot of things and know that, know that that's likely going to happen um, and be willing and, and accepting um, to figure out different ways to, to do what you do. And uh, I also was going to ask you, like, um, we talk about you. You mentioned about uh, your website, but mm -hmm. how can uh, there's any other like uh, how people can find more information about you? Like, there's a website and there's like Instagram. Or yeah, yeah, I'm on. Other I'm platforms. Yes, I'm on. I'm on all the social media places. You know, um, for better or for worse. About your future performance, you know. Oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have a calendar on my website, and then you know, also I try to. You know, like if you're a Spotify person, like the web, the, it, the calendar usually gets pushed to my artist page on Spotify or on Bandcamp. You know, those those sort of music related sites, um, you can kind of find information there too. But I do have a calendar right on my website. I also do a mailing list, so you, which you can sign up for on my website. You know, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and if you just search for me by name, it you, you'll find me. Um, um, but yeah, so just try to I try to share in, in all those places. 
I also was curious about, you uh, mentioned that earlier, that um, a lot of people misunderstand jazz, mm -hmm. what kind of music it is. Could you please tell us more about this? Yeah, I think there's a, you know, there's a, um, a way that like, that jazz, you know, people, people like to summarize things in, in just a few words. And it's like, if you, if, if, you know, if you, um, you know, if I asked you like to, or I asked someone like, okay, what word do you think of when you think of jazz? And people were like, oh, relaxing or, or um, cool or, you know, and they imagine like the, the, like a smoky old jazz club. And it's like, or, you know, and you imagine like, well, what does a jazz musician look like to you? Um, are they young? Are they old? Are they white? Are they black? Are they male? Are they female? Are they skinny? Are they big? You know, and the truth is, like, this music is such a living, and any art is such a living thing, and it's so changeable. Um, but I think it, you know, jazz in particular, because it's not a mainstream thing, it's, it really is just kind of like, okay, we're just going to put a couple of labels on how it sounds and put it over here and... It's just that thing that's over there, um, rather than being this kind of this this living thing that you get to experience. Um, you know, I think it's the same. You know, somebody might not really appreciate, I don't know, uh, Monet or Van Gogh in the way they would if they actually go to a, a museum and see the painting and the scale of the work and the brush strokes and the depth of the of the paint on the canvas. All of a sudden, you're like, this is has a different meaning now than just kind of seeing a picture of it in a book or seeing it, you know, oh yeah, he uses pretty, that's the artist that uses pretty colors, you know. Um, and so there's a little bit of a expectation put on, on the audience in some of these arts to, to take a step towards the art and to, and to dig in a little deeper to, okay, well, and this is for anything. I mean, this is jazz, this is folk yeah, music, true. this is classical music, this is even, you know, rock and roll music or, pop music it's like or singer songwriters it's like okay you get you know you have the ones that you're kind of fed as the most you know the easy easily accessible ones but dig a little deeper and and you may find something else for that artist and it may lead you to something else um, so it's a it's a wonderful opportunity as an audience or an art appreciator to kind of um take that extra step and 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 you know do exactly like you're doing ask the questions and and try to understand it in another way and have another perspective. I mean, like I said, for me, when I asked those questions and someone showed it to me, I fell so deeply in love with the music that it changed my whole life. So you never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to uh, tell to our audience, maybe something that we missed? Um, no, I think you asked some really good questions in this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. I mean, just, you know, I, I kind of keep coming back to that same thing. It's just that, and I know, I know you're specifically really interested in, like, trying to use this as a way to, to grow a, an awareness and grow a community. To commune, to know more about yeah. the musicians, what's their life behind the scene, you yeah. know? And I, think, and I think a big part of this is that, you know, as a person in as a, a consumer of art, as someone who goes to, you know, who listens to music or who likes to look at paintings or likes to hear the symphony or go see dance, that, you know, that that's not really a, it's not the same as watching TV. You know, it's not like you're just going to sit on the couch and that's it's just going to come to you. It's like, it's, if you take a step towards the music, like if you're, you know, like, oh, I wouldn't normally go and see an event like this but I'm going to check it out because, I don't know, there's something curious about it and it's something I wouldn't normally do. You'd be surprised how that affects um, a lot of your life and a lot of, a lot of your perspective on, on your community and on the people around you. So, well, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us and in, in sharing about your story and music. We appreciate and sure. we are we're so happy to learn about you. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It's really, really special. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Sure, thanks. Thank you. Well, this concludes this episode um, of Artist Voices, where we believe it's essential for artist voices to be heard. And we are um, thankful to Matthew Fritz for being with us. Uh, 
tonight. And thank you for watching us. And we'll see you next time.